Today, we finally take a look at the most requested algorithm. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for us to take a look at binary heaps. You're watching episode 5 of Sorting Algorithms Plus Plus. Hello YouTube and welcome back to Sorting Algorithms Plus Plus. Now, it's finally time for us to move on from taking a look at binary search trees and to actually go into looking at heaps. If the past couple of episodes were rather difficult to handle, well, you'll be happy to know that things are going to get slightly easier from this point on. And the reason for that is because we can draw a whole lot of parallels between binary heaps and the trees we've already looked at. So without further ado, let us take a look at what a binary heap actually looks like. Well, it looks like this. I don't think you need me to tell you how much this resembles an actual binary search tree, except the difference is this isn't a binary search tree at all. This is a binary tree. And instead of having the binary search tree property, it has a different property. This is known as the heap property. Now, before we continue, do take note that there are actually two different types of heaps. One is called a max heap, and the other is called a min heap. The difference between these two types of heaps are actually in the statement of the heap property. In particular, the heap property is actually different, though very related, between these two different types of heaps. And basically, these are the two different statements for the max heap and the min heap properties. Simply speaking, in a max heap, every time you have a set of nodes, the parent node must have a value greater than any of its child nodes. In a min heap, this is reversed. Every node should have a value smaller than its child nodes. So compare this with the binary search tree. You notice that in a binary search tree, the values are increasing from left to right. In a heap, the values are actually increasing vertically instead of horizontally. And of course, whether it's increasing upwards or downwards will depend on whether you choose a max heap or a min heap. Now, it is in fact time to actually throw out the whole, you know, am I talking about a max heap or a min heap? Essentially, we're going to focus on one of them. And this is actually the min heap. Let's take a look at why. The only difference between these two types of heaps are actually its ordering. So in the case of a max heap, the largest value has to be on top. And if you think about that in terms of the heap property, you'll understand why. Because of course, every single node must be larger than its children nodes. And so because of that, the largest node has to be right on top. A min heap has this reversed. The smallest value has to be on top, since of course, its children must be larger than it, according to the min heap property. So really, the way you handle a max heap and a min heap is actually exactly the same except your motivation for one is to push the larger items up and your motivation for the other is to push these smaller items up. Now, just to follow our usual convention when we actually sort things within the series, we sort it in ascending order. Now, a min heap actually allows you to do that, whereas a max heap will have things in descending order. I won't go into details with the actual sorting just yet, seeing as that that's something we want to look at in depth properly next lesson, but that's the reason why I'm actually throwing out the max heap. If you want to understand heaps in general, you can watch my explanations here and essentially just change things around. So having said that, let us no longer be confused about which type of heap I'm referring to. From this point on, I will only be using the min heap as an example, but you can easily apply that to the max heap. So let's begin. What are the things we know about a heap at the moment? Well, the first thing we know is that a heap must take on the property of a binary tree. Not a binary search tree, mind you, just a binary tree. The other thing we know is that this must fulfill the heap property. Now, there is actually a third condition, and that is a binary heap must strive to be a complete tree. So what actually is a complete tree? Formally, a complete tree refers to a tree that has everything filled up except the lowest level. Also on top of that, on the lowest level, we have to start from the left and as we fill in new items, it should move towards the right. What this means is this is a complete tree because of course there aren't any gaps in the middle. This is also a complete tree despite the fact that these guys aren't filled in. It's okay because this is the last level. And of course the items at the last level are filled in from left to right. This isn't a complete tree. And the reason for that is because there is a gap over here. 
the last row must be filled from left to right. So you can't just go left to right, skip a slot and then fill things in from there. You cannot do that. You must start from the left and move towards the right. This is also not a complete tree because there are items missing here. And if there are items missing here, you cannot start a new row. So hope you get the idea, a complete tree is filled in from top to bottom, left to right. So there is a kind of ordering that you need to follow. And basically, that is a heap. It must be a binary tree, it must fulfill the heap property, and it must be a complete tree. So now, let us actually make use of this heap as a data structure. Let's say I want to insert something into this heap. In order to fulfill the complete tree condition, what we have to do is the new item must be inserted here. Basically, when we are inserting the new item, we have to be sure we are not breaking the complete tree property. Remember that we are talking about a min heap here, but this guy is actually smaller than its parent. As a result, we're going to have to do something to actually, you know, bring back the heap property. This is when we look at an operation called sift up. The premise behind this is very simple. When you insert an item at the bottom of the heap, it violates the heap property. Well, most of the time it does. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to swap the item with its parent and we're going to have to continue doing this as far upwards as required until it rests at a point where it no longer violates the heap property. Now, since every node only has exactly one parent, this process is very simple. Basically, a single sift up operation looks something like this. First, check to see if the node is the root of the heap. Obviously, you couldn't move the node any higher even if you wanted to. The operation does nothing. Otherwise, we take a look at the value of the node's parent. Since we're talking about a min heap here, we want to ensure that a parent's value is smaller. If that's not the case, we fix this by simply swapping the two nodes over. During the insertion process, we need to do this repeatedly, and we'll only stop when the heap property is no longer violated. Of course, this can happen at any place inside the heap, depending on the value of the inserted item. And that's it, that's how simple insertion is. You insert something at the bottom, and you keep moving it up until it goes to its right place. Now, we've actually covered quite a lot of ground today, which is why I'm abruptly stopping my video here. This actually isn't enough to tell you everything about a heap's operations, but you know, if I told you everything about heaps today, today's video will be very long and the next episode will be very short. So instead, I'm gonna actually, you know, try to ration things out a little. And that is exactly why we are stopping here. Take this time to actually digest the concept of a sift up. You've only seen sift up applied to a min heap. Try to think of it in terms of a max heap and what conditions you'll have to change for it to work correctly. In two days time, we'll be making use of the heap to actually do sorting. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, that's all there is for this episode of Sorting Algorithms Plus Plus. If you have any comments, queries or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow the official Twitter account for this channel at twitter.com slash 0612tv. As always, I appreciate every like, favorite and subscription you give me. Until next time, you're watching 0612TV.